What's up, amigos? Welcome back to a new Dime for Life tutorial. And this week, we're going to talk about filter envelopes. Filter envelopes you use in sound design. Uh, so I don't know what your level is with sound design, but uh, an envelope is something that controls or modulates a sound over time. Um, divided in four phases, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And today I'll show you how you can apply an envelope to a filter to create really cool sounds. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, check out my courses. I have beginners courses, uh, intermediate courses, and advanced courses on Ableton and music production. Uh, I've got new courses starting in January, so feel free to check www.lessonsinlive.com and uh, check out my courses. Maybe you want me as a teacher instead of me on your uh, video, on the tutorial. <laughs> and uh, besides that, there's free preset packs, uh, paid preset packs, um, sample pack you can buy, uh, and master classes you can check on uh, the Lessons in Live web shop. You know, uh, you will support me a great deal if you, uh, if you get something, and if not, it's also great. You can just get the free stuff. There's a lot of free packs and kick makers and snare makers and whatnot online. So check that out. Also, I do feedback sessions on YouTube and Twitch uh, every so often, like I think, around once a month I'll do feedback sessions it's quite a new project I've been doing uh, and besides that I'm doing other Wednesdays I'm doing interviews with established artists ranging from people like Sidney Charles or Ilke Klein or Nora Q or Cora or Wazoo lots of different artists so check out um, the channel uh, on the Dive in Life uh, on YouTube and uh, yeah, let's get into this tutorial. Uh, I will show you on operator and wavetable how we can use envelopes on filters. So uh, we have a sound here. It's like I have a chorus and a reverb on it to make it just a bit nicer. Every time you do sound design, add some chorus, add some reverb to your sounds. It will give it some sort of vibe already. Uh, let's take a sine wave because it has more harmonics of a saw wave. We leave the envelope the same. So this is the envelope you normally use for, for volume. It's an amplitude envelope. And that if you make the attack longer, it's going to be like this. So what if we do this on the filter? So we click on the filter and we have to open the envelope. And it's not doing anything because the, the, the filter is, is um, a uh, high cut filter. So we need to make it go down. Now it will be, it follows the envelope. So the attack now is not volume. It's like... So every time I press a note, the, em the envelope will be followed. So the, the frequency will go up to maximum and then go down with the decay and depends on how you set it, of course. Which is pretty cool. You can also have it like this for more, for more bass sounds. You get like this classic, like a uh, George Michael sound kind of thing. And um, and this works really nice. But it's also for, for bass lines if it's, uh, if it's a bit longer. So we have the, um, if we have it like this. Now you can hear the filter slightly closing. So the decay really determines if the release, if the sustain is all the way down, uh, the decay determines how fast it's down. Wow. So for bass sounds, for like say club bass sounds, you would use it more like this for more more deep house kind of stuff, which is cool. So that's this way. Uh, we can also say, you know what, maybe if we keep it up and we invert the envelope to minus, we get this. Because now it's like inverted and the, the filter will go from down to up, which is super cool. And ah, this is so cool. And then it'll go back up again. So it will go all the way down and then back up again. So it's like inverted because it's in a minus 100. And you can create beautiful sounds with this. So this is on operator. Let's uh, move over to wavetable so you can see the same concept. And it has more of a visual effect here as well. So um, 
I have a sound here. Let's also make it more soy, and then we have the filter. Maybe we can actually use only one and take a basic shape just for showing you the best way. Nice, so we can, we have the filter, but we need to assign the filter. So if we take the frequency, we click on it and we go to our matrix, we can see the filter frequency being displayed there. Everything you click will be displayed here. So we do filter frequency one and we assign it 100% to envelope one. If we now close it, and we go to envelope one, we can do the same thing. Nice. That's cool. And we can also make it longer, of course. Go to our deep house stuff, you know, and we can have it. Now it will go down. So you can create really, really cool sounds. You don't have to go all the way up. You can also make it a bit like this. You know, and of course, I forgot to add like the reverb. Let's add some reverb. And same thing goes, we can put it minus 100. So if we put it up, And if you put the decay longer. Nice, right? So this is called a filter envelope. So it's just like an amplitude envelope. What when you press a note, it follows that envelope, like how the volume behaves over time, divided in attack, decay, sustain, and release. And for the for the filter envelope, it's gonna be controlling your cutoff frequency with like the amount of time it takes to get up. The decay, the same thing, attack, decay, sustain, release. I hope you found this insightful. I hope you create the most amazing sounds for your music and that it inspires you to make more music or, you know, if you were in a, in a bit of a, uh, uh, how do you call it, a drought or, or something that you couldn't make music, I hope this trick inspires you to make some new tracks. And uh, let me know what you think of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, share it with your friends, follow the, the channel, whatever, support the cause. I hope you liked it and I'll see you at the next one.